Yo, what's up guys? Today I want to show you a pretty overpowered stamina sword build that I just started messing with. It's really ridiculous. Um, I don't often play Stam Sword, but this idea just kind of came to my mind last night and I had to put it on and see what it would do and the results have been much better than I thought they were going to be. I was out there slaying it in PvP. Um, this is my only Daggerfall character I have, but yeah, I mean, I, a lot of these moves aren't as leveled as they should be. I use this character for PvE a lot, but he was out there killing it and a lot of the sets are pretty cheesy, most players would think, um, which is fair because they are, but they're very effective and I think this build could be utilized on Stamplar, Stam DKs, and Stam Wardens as well. And I'll even give some uh, alternative armor setups for when one of these sets gets nerfed inevitably. <clears throat> one of them has already been nerfed in the past, but um, it's very powerful. I'll give some alternatives. And yeah, let's get right into it. I'm going to start by going over the gear. I'll move on to the skills, which you can see right now on the dual wield bar. This is a dual wield and a two handed uh, build. And yeah, um, as you can see, there's Engine Guardian right now. Uh, helmet and shoulders are pretty interchangeable. But, so I'm running as a red guard. And I'm running the lover, Mundustone. Let's get right into that. We'll, we'll go over the character sheet soon. But I have the lover on for the physical penetration. And I'm a red guard. You could definitely be an orc or a wood elf for a stamina race in general. And then I'm using Dubious Camoran Throne for the max stam, max health, and stam recovery. And I'm also a werewolf, although you don't have to be. And I don't really use it, nor would I use it unless I was running a heavy armor version of this setup, which is definitely possible and would probably be even cheesier and more powerful. But I like it how I have it right now, and yeah, let's get into it. So there's one set. Um, on my front bar, my dual wield bar, I'm running Viper, five pieces of it. Weapon crit, uh, a max stam weapon crit, and then when you deal damage with a melee attack, you deal an additional 7.4k over four seconds, and it can happen every four seconds. You guys know about Viper. It's a very powerful set. that They nerfed it back in the day. Not even back in the day, not not too long ago, but they made it a damage over time instead of instant damage. So this this build is very much based around dots. You apply so much pressure, it's ridiculous. These people are just out there melting. They they can't survive against it. So yeah, you got five viper on your front bar using the jewelry and two one-handed. Uh, I believe one of them is, yeah, we got a dagger right here. The enchant on it is increase weapon and spell damage for five seconds. And then I have a sword, and I have oblivion damage on that, and it's precise, and this one is sharpened. Um, obviously, you could transmutate one of these, if not both, maybe to Nern, and it might do a little bit more damage for you. But this is what I had back in the day, and I threw it on, and it's been working. So yeah, five viper on the front bar, pretty important. Let's talk about the two-handed bar real quick. We got an asylum great sword on the back bar. We're using the move stampede, or you could use crit rush. Um, the only reason I said that is because if you wanted, instead of the asylum great sword, you could use the maelstrom two-handed or any Asylum two-handed. Those two are probably the best for your back bar. But we're also using the move Executioner, Reverse Slash. When you deal damage with Reverse Slash, you generate up to 14 ultimate based on how much execute damage is dealt. I made this Nern Honed, transmutated that, and I added a disease damage uh, glyph to this. It's very strong. My favorite weapon I have, probably. Um, so yeah, you got that on your back bar. Obviously, it counts for two items now with this new patch, Somerset. And yeah, you're going to do all, all the executes on your back bar, which is your two-handed bar. 
And let's get into the third set, I guess. Um, Sloads. Very overpowered. Let me not talk into my hand, excuse me. Um, yeah, you got Sloads. Uh, max magic, max stam, spell damage, weapon damage. Damaging an enemy has a 10% chance to put a leeching shadow on them. Dealing about 900 oblivion damage every one second for six seconds. And that can occur once every six seconds. Now I'm running five medium pieces of armor. You could easily change the slowed from medium to heavy. And it would be just as powerful if not stronger. Um, you're going to apply a lot of slowed and viper on this dual wield bar by using light attacks in conjunction with blood craze um, you're gonna slice it, I, I went with blood craze for the heal but yeah um, ridiculous damage over time on this you guys see oblivion damage goes through shields block whatever that with viper ticking at the same time hurricane blood craze it's insane it's way too much for a lot of these players to handle and they're getting melted and a lot of my moves aren't even leveled up. Um, my Dawnbreaker isn't morphed. Once I can morph that, do a few other things, it'd be crazy. But the good Stam Sorks out there, if you put this on, a good Stam or whatever, you'll definitely whoop some ass. Um, you'll do better than I'm doing, probably, for sure. Um, the helmet and shoulders, pretty interchangeable, like I said, I think. Um, I'm running two engine Guardian because my sustain isn't anything to write home to mother about um, obviously one piece health recovery but when you use an ability you have a 10% chance to summon the automaton restoring health stamina or magic every 0.5 seconds for six and a half seconds you could drop the engine guardian for two pieces of troll king especially if you're going to heavy armor route troll king would be nice as well you'd have better sustain in heavy armor probably and you'd get a good bit of health recovery. You could also go with one Kina and one Veladrith. That would be nasty. Um, you get a good bit more weapon damage, fully buffed right now. We're just buffed with Rally, we have about 3k weapon damage. Uh, if you proc the enchant, you send it about 3,350. Throw on Kina and Veladrith, you'll easily be at 4k. Um, so you do one Kina and one Veladrith if you wanted. You could do two Selene, it'd be very powerful as well. Um, and finally, the strongest would probably be Zon. Two Zon, five Slowed, and five Viper would just be unfair. As would Selene, or even Valken Scoria with this. Um, all of that is ridiculous. But I, I've opted for Engine Guardian because you're able to kill just fine with the Slowed and the Viper and the moves you have. You don't need a helmet and shoulder that kills for you. Engine Guardian helps me sustain. Because, as you can see, my stam recovery is not the greatest. Uh, on the right-hand side, you can see it's about 1593 right now, unbuffed. And, yeah, I mean, my stam recovery is not great. The only reason it's even that high is because of the ultimate I have slotted. Also, uh, let me go over the enchants. So I have one stam recovery enchant. And then two weapon damage ones. You could change one of those to stam recovery if you notice you need more sustain. Um, obviously, if you wanted to get rid of the engine guardian or something like that, you would probably change one to recovery. Because you have plenty of damage with this build. You're sitting at over 3k weapon damage at any given time with the slows and the viper. It's insane. It's too much for them to handle. And people are just melting. So, yeah. Um... Let's go into the moves real quick and see why this works. So on the dual wield bar, using blood craze, you weave a lot of this in with light and heavy attacks on players. It does bleed damage to them, it heals you for a little bit. Um, it's very strong. It's a good move. And then you got resolving vigor as your heal. Tooltip is nothing fantastic, unbuffed or buffed. But it's a heal over time, and it works. Um, Hurricane, you got that for your damage over time. Increase your spell and physical resist, and up your movement speed by 10%. Good DOT. 
good everything you need hurricane is a stamp sork and I don't even play stamp sork so yeah uh, quick cloak I I was running around a lot of the night without this morphed and was wondering why I was running so slow but once you get this on man are you quick it's, it's you can use hurricane and quick cloak just get away from everything quick cloak is there cuz it's gonna reduce your damage taken from AOEs by 25%, that siege, bombs, whatever. It's giving you major expedition. It helps pull Nightblades out of stealth along with Hurricane. You're gonna always keep Nightblades out of stealth with this build. You're gonna wreck a lot of mag sorks. Um, a lot of mag blades, a lot of magic in general. The one thing that was giving me a bit of a hard time tonight was mag plars and heavy that would use like Scoria. It'd give me a good run for my money. But if I was in the heavy slows, it would probably be a little worse off for them. And I'm going to still go over a few sets that you can use if you don't want to use slows or uh, Viper, too. So, yeah, stick around for that if you want. Um, yeah, quick, quick Cloak, though, makes you quicker, reduces your damage taken from AoEs, does all that, and does a little bit of damage. Um, but the damage isn't too important to me. Otherwise, you could use the other morph. If you want to ditch the speed and do a little more damage with that, I guess. But then I have Dark Deal. And you're going to bargain with the Darkness to restore 8.6k health and 4.8k stamina for the cost of 3,100 magic. A great move. I use this to heal myself a lot more than I use Rally to heal myself. Right, this is, they, they can bash you through this. It does have a cast time of 1.2 seconds. But I'm using immovable pots a lot with this in conjunction. If I need a big heal, I'll, I'll pop a healthy immovable pot and then dark deal. And even without the immovable pot, a lot of these players just aren't smart enough to bash you when they should. And there's too much going on for them to always do that. So I think dark deal is a good move to have. Good bit of health, good bit of stam for magic. And then the ultimate on this bar is pretty interesting. Um... I just have summon charge Atronach for now because of the passive in Daedric Summoning. As you can see, my Daedric Summoning's barely about to be level 43. Um, I'm gonna have to go over some of these passives and whatnot because I'm definitely lacking on some stuff here. But as you can see, with this passive down here, increase your health and stamina recovery by 20% while you have a Daedric Summoning ability slotted. So that counts for your ultimate as well. Uh, my stamina recovery was low 1400, maybe like 1390 without this on, and I was running around with overload. I didn't notice too much of a sustain issue. I was able to kill a lot of the players before my sustain would really matter, and if anything, I could fill back up with Dark Deal. But I figured I'd throw this on and try it out with about 15 to 1600 stamina recovery, and about 17 1800 when you have a potion up, depending on the potions you're using. So this is good to have there. It's a it's a good ultimate, um, but it's good to have there for that 20%. Because um, they're not running Bound Armor. I just unlocked Bound Armor tonight. They're not running the stamina version of it, I should say, either. Um, but if you could find a play, if you could remove any of these moves for your preference of, like, Bound Armor, feel free to. You'll get more stamina out of it. Um, but yeah, let's go to the back bar real quick. We got a lot of two-handed moves back here. We got a lot of, uh, all the dual wield passives, you're gonna want those. And you're gonna want all of your two-handed passives. My rally's only level three, so I got rally back here. Executioner goes good in conjunction with the two-handed sword I'm using, Asylum. We got Stampede on for a gap closer. Um, it's gonna reduce their movement speed by 60% for four seconds as well. And then Dizzying Swing. Whenever we're not using light and heavy attacks with Blood Craze as our main DPS, we're going to use Dizzying Swing, Heavy Attack, Light Attack combos, and throw in some Dawnbreakers. Uh, my Dawnbreakers is not even morphed, but you don't always need to drop an ultimate to get the kill. So, yeah, you're going to do like a Dizzying Swing, get him to low health, use Execute. The dots are going to be taking on him like crazy. That's just pretty much like a basic rotation of how it would work. Just trying to give you guys an idea, I guess. So yeah, you got Dizzying Swing, it stuns him, knocks him back, all that good stuff. Powerful physical damage. A lot of good players in duels are going to dodge this move. But in open world, you're going to land this move a lot. 
stampede into him in a dizzying swing light attack. Uh, ideally, though, you want to start off a lot of fights with Blood Craze on him. But yeah, so you got, you got your moves back here. Stampede, dizzying swing, rally is your burst heal. Good heal to have. It gives you your major brutality as well because we're not running crit surge. Although you could run crit surge if you ditch your summon charge Atronach for overload and then throw your crit surge on your overload bar. You could throw uh, bolt escape on your overload bar. These two moves. Uh, that would give some decent heals every time you crit. And we do have pretty decent crit on this build. You'd lose a little if you did the heavy armor setup, but still probably have decent crit. Um, bolt escape probably wouldn't be bad to have on that overload bar. This is just if you want to put overload on your dual wield bar. There's a few ul ultimate choices. You could put negate on there. Um, you could honestly put the dual wield ultimate. You'll heal yourself. You could morph it to either one, I'm sure. And it'd probably be somewhat effective. Not not the most effective. You could rock out Dawnbreaker on both bars. Like I said, you could be a werewolf and turn into a werewolf if you're going with the heavy armor version of this and you want to put Troll King or Engine Guardian on. Werewolf would be pretty effective, I'm sure. Um, yeah, you could throw Trap Beast and Call Traps on your Overload bar as well. Stuff like that. Just utility stuff. We don't have the passive fully for combat frenzy yet. Like a lot of my stuff just isn't leveled, so you, you do want these passives though. You generate twenty ultimate when you kill an enemy player if it's leveled like it should be. We got Vigor over here obviously. Um all these attack or passives, excuse me, continuous attack and all that. Yeah, your support, red guard, like I say, you could be an orc or what elf, any stamina class. You're gonna wanna get your medicinal use up for um, the potions to last longer. That's really important. I need to get on that. Um, let's see, obviously Undaunted is great to have for these two passives. Increase max health and stam and uh, the synergies depending on the armor pieces you're wearing. Right now I'm wearing five medium and two heavy. My chest is heavy, my uh, shoulder is heavy as well. Everything else is medium. But yeah. Um. Let's see, what, what am I forgetting here so far without going into champion points and all that yet? Kind of rushing through this. It's pretty late. I just wanted to get it out to you guys. It's not as professional as it should be, if it even should be professional, I guess. But yeah, you could definitely do this in heavy armor, like I said. Five heavy slows on the body, five medium slows on the body, five viper on the front bar. 3 Viper on the back bar with uh, the Asylum Greatsword back there. I'll give you guys some armor alternatives real quick. If you don't want to use the armor I just suggested, although I would. I feel like those are the bread and butter. And then I'll talk about these passives real quick and move on to the champion points. Um, so yeah, other al armor alternatives. You could rock five uh fortified brass i don't even have it but um yeah fortified brass is pretty insane you could rock several different sets uh black rose fury if you want to go the heavy armor route you don't want to wear slows but mostly what i would do is i would keep the slows on before it's nerfed otherwise i would use fortified brass and if i was going to change something it'd probably be the viper and I would change this to either 3 Agility with Master Dual Wield up here. And by Master, I'm talking about the VDSA weapons. Increases the bleed damage of Twin Slashes by 1448 each tick. Um, you get those from Vet Dragon Star Arena. So I would do maybe two of those and 3 Agility if you wanted to get rid of Viper. Or I would do five hulking draugr dual wield and three hulking draugr jewelry with like five fortified brass and then at that point you're gonna have a good bit more stamina so you could probably get rid of the engine guardian and you're gonna need more damage at that point probably so go with something like Selene, Zahn, or Scoria. Um, you wanna keep the lover Mundus stone I think. 
it's pretty good to have but yeah uh, fortified brass on the body or slowed probably and then like I said about the jewelry in the front bar now let's uh, get into the champion points real quick and forewarning my champion points probably aren't as min max as they should be compared to some of these other players but it's definitely seemed to work so far um, so I got 56 into ironclad for a 20% reduction to direct damage I got 43 in resistant we sent it about 2800 crit resist we'll go over the character sheet soon um, that's 1100 out of this right there I went and put 42 points into hardy 39 into elemental defender for about 9 10% of each and 35 into thick skin for almost 15% leaving me with 29 for quick recovery for increasing my healing received by about seven and a half percent that was a red tree um, probably even keep it the same if I were switching my sword from medium to heavy I'd most likely keep it the same now the green tree might not if you're in heavy but you're gonna reduce the cost of your break free by about 22 percent with 66 points in there I went and I put 16 points into reducing the cost of sprint giving me about 10 percent and 21 points in the siphoner for almost six percent then we got 59 points into moon calf for 12 and a half percent of stamina recovery and 37 points into tenacity for nine percent on your uh, heavy heavy attacks to restore your resources and then 51 points into tumbling to reduce the cost of your roll dodge by 19 <coughs> percent and put anything into Befoul or Shadow Ward, I don't, I don't think it's really needed. Uh, feel free to switch your guys' CP up if you feel like you need to, but this seems to work. So I got 27 in Blessed for 7% more heals, 41 points into Physical Weapon Expert to increase the damage done with light and heavy attacks, for two handed, one handed shield and dual wield abilities, 22.85%. Uh, 36 points into shattering blows to increase your damage done to damage shields by about 15% and 52 points into master at arms for a 19% increase with direct damage attacks then I put 15 points into thaumaturge 20 points in precise strikes 10 in piercing 49 into mighty I probably didn't need to read like everything as much as I did but um you guys get the gist. 11%. 1,000. You, you got good penetration. One of your weapons is sharpened right now. You got the Lover Mundus Stone piercing. People are just melting, man. Slowed and Viper together. It's absolutely ridiculous. I'm sure this guy has a test dummy in his crib. Not like I'm gonna put out numbers, but. Get the combo down, I guess. Maybe not because I can't find it, but I think you guys get the gist. We went over the champion points. Let's go over the character sheet real quick. It's not fantastic, but it's definitely something. So, yeah, fully buffed with the potion right now. We're sitting at about 1800 stamina recovery, 2900 weapon damage on this bar, 45.4% weapon crit. We'll have about 20k health in Cyrodiil, give or take. 34k stam on both bars. You're spelling physical resist with hurricane. We're gonna be about 18,000, and you got 2,800 crit resist. Nothing fantastic for resistance or anything, unless you were going to fortify brass away. But back here, we got 3k weapon damage, a little bit less weapon crit, or a good bit less weapon crit, and less stam recovery because of that passive we're missing out back here with the ultimate um, so yeah you, you got good weapon damage a lot of the damage is coming from the slows and the viper but you'll still land good dizzying swings good dawn breakers good executioners um, you'd have more stamina if you went with hulking draugr bone pirate um, you'd have more recovery if you went with bone pirate too but 
I'm definitely liking the Slodes and the Viper for now. It's very powerful. It's very broken. 